Right. So, um, what uh, led you to uh, found the Red Center for Obesity and Food Policy? Well, I've been working on issues of nutrition and obesity for years and started off by doing studies on treating obesity. But the results of those studies weren't very encouraging and it was pretty apparent that this was a problem that needed to be prevented. And if you want to prevent something like obesity, you begin looking at things like public policy and what things in the environment can be changed in order to create better food conditions. Also, uh, uh, were there any major uh, obstacles you had to overcome in order to found the Red Center? Like oh, with yeah. funding and such? Big, big obstacles. Um, if you're going to change the food environment, then uh, there are a number of things that potentially stand in the way. Um, high on that list is the food industry that makes billions of dollars selling high fat, high sugar, high calorie foods and marketing them to the entire population including vulnerable parts of the population like children. Um, so that's one obstacle. Another obstacle uh, are just food norms that we have in this culture where over time people have become, ac become accustomed to a number of things that are contributing to poor diets like very large portions like foods that are very sweet, um, like having food accessible 24 hours a day in multiple places, um, having food available in vending machines everywhere. There are a number of factors like this in the food environment that have changed significantly and those are contributing in an important way to the problem. And then in some cases the law even becomes mm -hmm. an obstacle because for example, food marketing is a very uh, pernicious influence. There's a tremendous amount of it. It's done in a very convincing, compelling way. It comes at people from many different angles now, not only television, but on the internet, the social media, etc. But um, it's protected by the First Amendment of the Constitution because it's considered commercial speech that is given a certain level of protection, much like political and religious speech. And so government has to get quite involved in order to curtail the marketing practices that are occurring. So I know the uh, Red Center, do, uh, their goals are to you know, uh, assess the causes of obesity and weight stigmatism and try to like, correct that. So what do you think are the like, major uh, causes of obesity? I guess you explained already, but also like weight stigmatism like I'll come back to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the causes of obesity, there are several logical places to search. Uh, one would be biology. Maybe people are biologically vulnerable to develop this problem. Another would be failing willpower or personal irresponsibility. And the other would be a changing environment. Um, biology is not a tenable explanation because the prevalence of obesity has increased in the U.S. year by year by year. And certainly our biology hasn't changed in that time. Uh, personal irresponsibility is not a good explanation either because overall people are not behaving in irresponsible ways. If you look at whether people are doing other health related behaviors like wearing seat belts and having protected sex and uh, getting preventive checkups and things like that, the numbers have been stable or even improving. So the question is, what's changed so dramatically in the environment that's made it so difficult for people to eat a healthy diet and be physically active? And those are the factors that we are looking at as a center, and we're hoping through changes in public policy to be able to modify in a way that makes healthy behavior more easy for people to attain. Um, the, we use the concept of default, where we consider the food environment to be a pretty terrible set of defaults mm -hmm. where people are uh, sold, marketed, uh, unhealthy foods left and right. Uh, the kids from a very early age are imprinted on fast food and sugared beverages and other categories of foods that are contributing to ill health. And overall the uh, environment is challenging to people in many ways. So our hope is to connect science with public policy in a way that improves the American diet and also the diet around the world. Now we also work on the issue of weight bias and stigma. Uh, there's tremendous prejudice and discrimination aimed at overweight people 
studies have shown that it ranks up there with gender bias and race bias as a, a source of prejudice in the United States. And it affects the lives of overweight people tremendously. So our hope is to uh, uh, attack the problem of obesity, but be compassionate for the people who have a problem. And um, this is very important on a number of levels, certainly for the individuals who suffer from the problem. They deserve kindness and compassion. Um, but also, our public policy is deeply affected by attitudes people have about obesity. It's one of the reasons that politicians ignored the problem for decades, uh, because they thought that individuals were responsible for the problem, solely responsible for the problem, and that it was their responsibility to change, so why should government get involved? Now, there's been a significant change in attitude about that in government, which I think is very positive. <clears throat> so that's why we try to work on reducing weight bias at the same time, trying to change conditions so that obesity becomes less likely. Um, well, this does seem like a very uh, large task to, uh, to take on. Are there any, like, uh, are there any other academic departments that the Red Center works with here at Yale or at other universities? Oh yes, we're connected with um, academic and uh, political institutions around the world. So at Yale, uh, we have good connections with the law school, with the School of Public Health, the School of Medicine, the School of Business, uh, and some other departments. Outside Yale, uh, we're connected with researchers around the world, uh, with the World Health Organization, with um, non-government organizations in a variety of countries. And our hope is to leverage the science we do into political action and impact uh, by keeping policymakers informed about the recent developments in science. Well, what sets the what sets the uh, Rudd Center apart from other centers that uh, have similar goals of uh, reducing obesity? Well, I think we're unique in the world <coughs> in the following way: there are. Uh, centers that do science on obesity, but they're generally not connected up with policymakers, and the science is, is typically not designed in a way that would be useful for policymakers. So we like to correct that problem. And then there are advocacy groups that are working with policymakers to help change dietary conditions in the U.S., but they tend not to be connected with science. So in our mind, the combination of those two things, the science with expertise on public policy is a pretty powerful combination. And I believe that's what sets us apart. Right. Um, on your web on the uh, Rudd Center's website, it says how it um, works with other partners in the world of media, industry, and government. I guess you had touched on that previously, but like, are there any main major partners in, like, say, the media or the industry that you guys work with? Oh, sure. Well, I'm a, a very big believer in uh, scientists being helpful to the media. And when breaking issues occur, uh, we're likely to be writing blogs about it or doing interviews with the press. So as an example, um, you, could, uh, you could find, in just the last few days, interviews that I've done with the Washington Post, the USA Today, uh, a blog I wrote for The Atlantic, um, and a variety of things on an issue that's occurring right now. And uh, today I did a radio interview with NPR, and tomorrow a television interview I'll do. And so we believe the media can be a very important source of outreach, a very important way of informing the public so they're in a better position to make decisions on these key issues. Uh, when you mentioned industry, we have, we have many discussions with uh, players from the food industry, but um, we don't do it in a way where we take money from them. So we hope to remain objective and unbiased and able to interact with the industry in a way that doesn't create conflicts of interest.